Welcome to our in-depth exploration about the best substance for preventing cardiovascular disease such as heart attack and stroke. In this video, we will unmask the mysteries of these molecules from their formation to their vital roles in your health. Hopefully this explanation will change your mind about the possibility action to be taken to prevent cardiovascular disease. Okay, without any further ado, let's continue to Chapter 1. Chapter 1, Understanding the Lipid Profile Before entering explanation about that substance, it is important to understand about lipid profile. Cholesterol is a vital substance produced primarily in your liver. The liver produced two types of cholesterol. First, HDL or high-density lipoprotein and second, LDL or low-density lipoprotein. First, we will talk about HDL. HDL stands for high-density lipoprotein. It's often referred to as good cholesterol due to its beneficial effects on cardiovascular health. HDL is a complex particle composed of proteins and lipids, including cholesterol and phospholipids, that circulates in the bloodstream. HDL plays a crucial role in the reverse cholesterol transport process. It acts as a scavenger, picking up excess cholesterol from tissues, including arterial walls, and transporting it back to the liver for recycling or excretion. This process helps prevent the buildup of cholesterol in the arteries, reducing the risk of atherosclerosis and heart disease. Second is LDL. LDL stands for low-density lipoprotein. It's often referred to as bad cholesterol due to too many people and doctors associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular diseases. We will share more about what they called as bad in this video. Actually, LDL plays a crucial role in transporting cholesterol from the liver, where it's synthesized, to cells throughout the body. Cholesterol is essential for various physiological functions, including cell membrane structure, hormone synthesis, and bile acid production. However, when LDL levels are elevated, excess cholesterol can accumulate in the walls of arteries, leading to the formation of plaques. Let's go deeply about LDL. I want you to understand that there are two types of LDL, they're called type A and type B, or alternatively pattern A and pattern B. First, type A is large and buoyant. It floats and it lasts about two days in your body. It's not involved in any plaguing or clotting and is considered the more normal LDL. Second, type B is smaller and denser. It lasts about five days in your body, so the particles can be involved in the formation of plaques or clots. When someone has a heart attack or stroke, they tend to have more of the type B LDL. Lastly, triglycerides. Triglycerides are a type of lipid or fat found in your bloodstream. They are the most common type of fat in the body and are derived from the fats you eat in your diet or produced by your liver from excess calories. Triglycerides are essential for energy storage and metabolism, but elevated levels of triglycerides in the bloodstream, known as hypertriglyceridium, can increase the risk of cardiovascular diseases such as heart disease and stroke. High triglyceride levels are often associated with other metabolic abnormalities, including obesity, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. Okay, after you know about the common lipid profiles in the blood test, it's time to go to the next chapter. Chapter 2, What the Niacin is Niacin, also known as vitamin B3, is an essential vitamin for the proper function of the body. It plays a role in energy metabolism and cell signaling. Niacin is found in various foods and it's also available as a dietary supplement. Niacin refers to two chemical forms. First, nicotinic acid. In order to improve lipid profile, nicotinic acid form is the thing we should consume. This form is usually called as niacin. Second, nicotinamide. This form is more about providing benefits for your skin. This form is mentioned as niacinamide. In order to reduce cholesterol level or improving lipid profile, it is good to know what is the difference between niacin and statin, which widely known as substance to reduce cholesterol levels. Niacin and statins are both used to manage cholesterol levels and reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, but they work in different ways and offer unique benefits. Common or similar benefits are 
Number 1. Statins and niacin are medications used to treat high cholesterol. Both medications lower LDL cholesterol in the blood and triglycerides. Number 2. Statins and niacin work by blocking the enzyme in the liver responsible for making cholesterol and helping the liver remove the cholesterol already circulating in the blood. And the difference between niacin and statins are Number 1. The difference is niacin raises HDL or good cholesterol more than statins. Number 2. Statin has more potential side effects such as muscle pain, liver damage, and increased blood sugar levels in some individuals. Niacin has niacin flush as side effect, the readiness spread around the body within short period of time. We will talk about niacin flush more in the next chapter. After you know very well about niacin, especially the difference between niacin and statin in terms of decreasing cholesterol or lipid profile mechanism, let's continue to the next chapter. Chapter 3, Niacin Flush Niacin flush is a common side effect experienced by some individuals when taking niacin supplements. It is characterized by a temporary reddening of the skin, often accompanied by sensations of warmth, itching, and tingling. The flush typically begins on the face and neck before spreading to other parts of the body, such as the chest and arms. While niacin flush can be uncomfortable, it is generally considered harmless and transient. Niacin flush occurs due to the release of prostaglandins and histamine, which cause vasodilation or widening of blood vessels and increased blood flow to the skin. In fact, niacin flush is considered a normal response to niacin supplementation and is often used as a marker of niacin's bioavailability. It's important to note that niacin flush is not an allergic reaction and does not indicate an adverse event. Some individuals may even find the flush sensation tolerable or even enjoyable. However, for those who find niacin flush uncomfortable or bothersome, there are strategies to minimize its occurrence. These include starting with a low dose of niacin and gradually increasing the dose over time, taking niacin with meals to reduce its intensity, or using extended-release formulations that release niacin more slowly into the bloodstream. In summary, niacin flush is a temporary and benign side effect associated with niacin supplementation. While it may be bothersome for some individuals, it is generally considered normal and not a cause for concern. If you experience severe or persistent symptoms of niacin flush, it's advisable to consult a healthcare professional for guidance on adjusting your niacin dosage or formulation. Let's move to the next chapter. Chapter 4, The Benefits of Niacin Niacin, whether as dietary or supplement, offers several benefits which is very important for the body. Number 1, Decreasing Cardiovascular Disease Niacin can increase levels of HDL good cholesterol while lowering LDL bad cholesterol and triglycerides, which can reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. In other words, by improving lipid profile and vasodilation, niacin supports heart health and may reduce the risk of heart attacks and strokes. Number 2. Supports energy metabolism. Niacin plays a crucial role in converting carbohydrates, fats, and proteins into energy, supporting overall metabolic function. Number 3. Maintains healthy skin. Adequate niacin levels are essential for maintaining healthy skin, and niacinamide, a form of niacin, is often used in skincare products to improve skin barrier function and reduce inflammation. Number 4. May help with arthritis. Some research suggests that niacin supplementation may alleviate symptoms of osteoarthritis by reducing inflammation and supporting joint health. Number 5. May improve cognitive function. Niacin has been investigated for its potential role in supporting cognitive function and reducing the risk of neurodegenerative diseases, although more research is needed in this area. Number 6. Regulates blood sugar levels. Niacin may help improve insulin sensitivity and glucose tolerance, which can be beneficial for individuals with diabetes or insulin resistance. These benefits highlight the importance of incorporating niacin-rich foods into your diet or considering niacin supplementation. After you watch through Chapter 1 until Chapter 4, 
We believe that you have very good insight about niacin and considering niacin to your dietary intake or by supplement. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.